welcome back to another episode of Fight Capital, where we step into the rings of combat sports business. I'm your host, Ryan Rappaport. Today, I'm joined by a man who needs no introduction in the world of MMA, the strategic, the forward thinking, the fighter turned entrepreneur, Ian McCall. Ian has been a stalwart in the UFC and WEC phantom uh, and bantamweight divisions in the past and has a pretty remarkable career. I really appreciate Ian's ability to overcome adversity and keep moving forward, uh, very much working towards success across many different uh, 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 avenues of sports. And today, uh, our conversation uh, is a little choppy because we had to take it first in his cards. He's a busy guy, uh, and then back into his apartment. So there'll be a little chop and a little editing today, but looking forward to everyone's feedback and enjoying this conversation. Big events, yeah. I've got five big events coming up that all have to do with the nonprofit. So that that's, you know, that that's where it's leading. My life is leading into running this nonprofit, um, and trying to do the, the the Lord's work, trying to heal athletes one at a time or twelve at a time, whatever I can do to to help these to help my people. At first, I was selfish and I was like, I'm just going to help fighters because that's all I know. And then I started to look at other other athletes who are my friends because most of my athletes are artists or athletes, you know. So I I just started to look around. And I'm like, no, this is for everybody because we're we're all we all as athletes we get on stage or let's say from fighting you you climb into a cage in your underwear to fight someone for blood money on replay <laughs> and blood money. we don't. We don't even need to, and you're giving and receiving PTSD the whole time. You're doing like, well, I fucked that dude up. I put him in the hospital. Yeah, then you 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 acquired something called TITS, trauma-induced trauma syndrome. And it's not good for you. I put a couple people in the hospital, and that, that's really taxing to do that to somebody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we go up there, and we act out our childhood traumas on stage. Whether you're rapping or you are fighting or, or flipping a motorcycle way too many times, um, you're, you're acting out. And, and you know, there's a two, a two, you know, two sides of this. It's a double-edged sword. Is number one, I'm helping people fix their brain damage as a whole, whether they're new, you know still going or, or retiring. But post-retirement is okay. What's next? What what's after? This career because most athletes number one are broke most athletes um especially if they focus their entire lives on something most of them never accomplished it number one and in the wake of not accomplishing not 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 acquiring these life skills they they they, they shot themselves to the top and they never hit the mark mm -hmm. they never made any money and now they have no life skills they don't know what to do and I, sorry, I laugh, but I was that guy. I, I was like, well, I'm just going to kill myself. This is stupid. Um, and I found a path. And a, a big thing mushrooms do or, or ayahuasca does is it, it, it shows you a path. It galvanizes the path of what you should be doing with your life. And for me, it's always a life of service. You know, as an athlete, you have these stories to tell people. People look up to you and they wear your jerseys and they want to be you. Uh, up until you retire and then you just drift off into nowhere and no one calls anymore no checks you know there's maybe one round of congratulatory stuff but after that no one really gives a fuck because that's just how humans work um, you know and if you if you do achieve the greatness you've acquired a lot of damage on the way you know so we have to heal that as well then there's the other side of the thing it, it's um, even for me I feel bad I'm on the spectrum so I don't cry much and that's like one benefit of being on the spectrum, I guess. I don't have to show that much emotion. Um, <laughs> or you it just doesn't you come out. But yeah, it doesn't come out, right? That's what, yeah. Yeah, it just sits there inside of me, and I'm like, oh, fuck, I should. Pretty damn good. But hey, brother, congrats uh, for you and Sonia as well. That was uh, uh, quite the celebration. Oh, Glad you guys were able to pull that off. Yeah, man. Within one week, I had my birthday, 39. I had the five-year anniversary of my retirement where I got knocked out in front of 40,000 people in Japan. Horiguchi, cool. right? Yep. Yeah. Well, one punch, bang. At least it wasn't a bunch of punches, thank God. He hit, he hit hard enough to end it one. <laughs> um, and uh, I had my engagement to my soon-to-be wife, which was beautiful. 
and I pulled it off so smooth. I got to ask her to marry me in my favorite place in the world. Um, she lives in Mexico. And I started going to Mexico, number one, for fun, because Tulum is a lot of fun. And Mexico's a good time. I'm, I'm half Mexican. And uh, plus the all the shamanistic type medicine work I do down there um, in business, retreats, things like that. And then I met a woman down there. And, I don't know. She's just very special. She's, she's, no one's ever treated me like this or made me feel this way. So uh, I'm happy. And, you know, she's just not like the rest. She's very, very different. So I'm excited to change that up and start a life. You know, I, I'm retired from, from like putting my fun first in life. I live a life of service to others. And I, I can tell my dog, my like, look, daddy has lived every experience he's ever wanted to live like twice more than once two or three times yeah all before all. 40 <laughs> yeah all way yeah, way before before 25 you know and i told him like hey anything you can ask me i've done more than once like just so you know and i i now just don't care about my own because i have i have fun watching my kid have fun i have fun doing the things she wants to do or what my fiance wants to do um you know that like i have a really really solid life i'm technically retired you know uh, but i work because i'm not even 40 to work but also because i like helping people and i, I won't the, the day i started saying like five years ago probably when i retired i'm not going to touch anything unless it helps other people was the day that my life changed forever and uh it's been it's been an uphill battle of course I'm, I've been taking arrows for my industry and for my beliefs for the whole time. And, I, you know, there's been, there's been points where I've been exhausted. I've, I've had fucking breakdowns. I've been through some gnarly shit along the way. And uh, it's been, it hasn't been easy. Even my, my buddy, look, I've, I've, I've finally learned to, put up boundaries in my life and it's all it's such a work in progress you know like i'm pitched as this life coach this healer and all this stuff I'm like i'm not perfect like i'm not i want everyone to know that i'm i'm fucking hanging by a thread sometimes you know and it's it's but whatever i have done whatever the things that i teach they they make a lot of sense to me so i've got a lot of cool opportunities coming up to speak at big conferences or you know, being a, a person of interest at a conference like the MAPS conference in Colorado, still bummed they didn't ask me to speak because it's like my friends. But whatever, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> it didn't happen. It's fine. I'll still be there hanging out. It's the, the next one, the next one. Well, tell me a little bit about the Athlete's Journey Home because that sounds like a super cool project. And, you know, what led to that happening? And, you know, where is that currently at? So Athlete's Journey Home is my nonprofit that I've been thinking about doing for a couple of years. Uh, I was spurred onto it with or from my friend, Jesse Gould at the heroic hearts project, uh, which is a 501 C that works with veterans and they do testing, they do coaching and they, I mean, he works with a lot of people, a lot of coaches that have been certified through um, a program called being true to you. It's the best highest level of certification that you can get in the psychedelic and addiction space it's, it, i'm going through it right now and it's changed my life it's really incredible and i was already coaching people now i have like an actual system because of this people. before it was the usual you know me being weird crazy and people just kind of following along um well i saw him doing all this and he he was the first person to say that bro why don't you just start a start a nonprofit? you know because i i don't do things for money and i can run my science I can have my for-profit co coaching company, the McCall Method, get paid by, by the nonprofit. Obviously, a fair wage, never, never overpay. I'm gonna be paying other coaches that I get certified to do it. I'm not gonna pay these people a bunch of like, crazy amount of money. It's gonna be it's important because if you if you're researching traumatic brain injury stuff, then you can apply the understanding of how to heal it to a lot of neurodegenerative diseases or things that happen to the brain. You know. Um, the Alzheimer's, the ALS, the uh, whatever, keep going, you know, they, all those, all those sort of inflammatory diseases. How are we going to knock all this down? Um, 
And the first ones with ayahuasca, we're going to be doing gut biome stuff, blood, you know, like fecal testing. So people are going to just shit in the bag, which is kind of funny. Uh, you know, we're going to be doing blood and, and people are going to have to, this is a, the first apology I say is, I'm sorry, we're going to have to strap like an EKG machine to you while you're in ayahuasca, while you're in that whole realm, because that's inappropriate. I, I mean, I had HBO shoot a real sports documentary on us during a mushroom ceremony with a, I mean, it was, and it was, it was a cool experience, but highly inappropriate, highly inappropriate to have a camera crew, even though they were an Emmy award winning camera crew to have a camera crew sitting there was not cool. Yeah. When um, they, when they so, caught Dean Lister basically thinking he had died and like, dude, yeah. Dean, Dean is a powerful guy. And, uh, you know, if, you, if anyone who watches him on Instagram knows that he's just known for destroying people and to see him like in tears thinking that he is that he had like banished off into another realm. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I get that 100 uh, percent. That's not not the best environment for uh, facilitating people's uh, energy. Right. And making sure that they're they're no. feeling like they're in a good place. No, but, you know, we're uh, I've learned a lot through this path, the mistakes I've made and. But this is what I ha I have to get this data, so I'm gonna do my my damnedest to make sure that these athletes are coached before and after properly. Um, so then, so then, uh, wh wh whichever of them wants to coach after, then eventually, I I don't even have to go to Peru with them. They go, they they take the athletes and they coach the athletes. You know, they 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 advertise this to their lane of people because we, we all have our own lane and fans and to have someone go hey i'm going to be coaching people through an ayahuasca 10-day sit in peru who wants to come you know so there's a lot of work to be done you know i have the profit side i have the for-profit i have non-profit i have you know the scientific basis of uh, imperial college of london uh, also working with university of miami I got the UFC to agree verbally, just verbally, but they say it's going to happen. Uh, Jeff Dubitsky assured me of that. The UFC agreed to a study with the University of Miami using microdose of psilocybin and CBD. Um, and they're going to fly fighters from the fights. You know, on Sunday, they fly them home. They're going to fly them to the university or to Miami. So they'll stay somewhere near the university they'll go through a week-long protocol of cbd and psilocybin they'll get all the right testing equipment because they, they phase one's already started with this and that's novel technology uh, i don't know enough on the technology to really speak on it but i need to be tested basically i need to go through the whole thing um, and yeah i mean the ufc agreed to my study with johns hopkins years ago but that didn't work because it just wasn't the right study for them but this is an actual, you know, funded by ECP Pharma. Uh, like this is this is an actual post-traumatic brain injury study. Someone has to go there within three days of being, you know, injured. So this is this is incredible. I mean, did have Jeff call me and like praise me for it? I was like, wow, okay. And I know that I didn't do this for money. I didn't do this for praise. But I know I'll get some out of it. I mean, they. You know, Miami people, they, they want me to be running point on this, which I should. They want me to have some sort of job facilitating the whole thing. And we'll see if that happens. You know, I'm not going to get my hopes up and say, like, oh, the UFC is going to pay me or the university is going to pay me in the position the world. Whatever you want to say about the UFC, people can say it. Uh, Dana or whoever. Um, I know sports from the inside. And the UFC is the best the way they treat people the way they talk about you know athletes behind the scenes in meetings um you know yes we're still a commodity you we're never going to not be a commodity this isn't going to be uh you know sunshine and rainbows it, you're you're signing it so uh, you're standing up to fight the cage so grow up peter pan you know like you're, you're you are you know one loss away from you know, ending your career at all times. So we need to realize that. And whether that's through, you know, a TBI or a broken leg or a bad performance, I mean, any point we're disposable. And but but with that said, I mean, look, they built the, they built the the performance institute. They've they've really gone out of their way to do all this stuff that a, 
you know, has boxing ever done anything like this? No. No, fuck no. Uh, oh, yes. Do, do do the NFL or does the NFL have some really cool stuff? I'm sure, but we don't really hear about it because they keep it a secret. Oh, well, nothing with you know? psilocybin, like, though. And, I guarantee they, you that. No, no, no. And, and, I, and I, I hope to bridge that gap eventually. I do. I think that... Um, it's not far off. I'm... When, hey, when we got together last time, you I, I don't know if you were co coaching Mark at the time, but uh, I know like you were just like, I'm just coaching my daughter, like just da my daughter yeah. and BJJ. How'd the whole thing with Mark the Shark start? <clears throat> so he shows up to my house <clears throat> and you know, we were friends. We used to work together at a UFC gym and, and he goes, hey, man, he goes, what do you think about me? being a bare knuckle boxer. <laughs> I was like, why the fuck would you want to do that? You wouldn't do it. I was like, no, that's, that's fucking crazy. Don't want to do that savage shit. Are you kidding me? Um, he goes, well, I'm going to do it. And he, he had this whole plan, this whole thing planned out. I can be there within five fights. I can be world champion within five fights. And just kind of like had this whole pitch where by the end, I was like, he's like, you want to do it? And I was like, fuck yeah, let's go. I'll help you get ready. I started to think about it. And now <clears throat> you go to these events. Number one, the quality of fighters or fights has gone through the roof in one year. Way better. Way better. There's still some slobs that can in there that honestly, it the, the fat will get trimmed, men and women. When you see these people and you're like, who the fuck? Why are you here? Just because it's bare knuckle boxing and no one else wants to do this? Like you're, you are gross. Like, yeah, but no even the people I, that, even the people that think they want to do it, you know, like the MVPs and the Luke Rockholds, and you got, you know, someone like Mike Perry in there who's just a little grittier, a little more crazy, you know, willing to take the punch on the jaw to, to deal another one, which I think is like the big thing with bare knuckle, right? So, how do you train that with him? Cause that you just got to be fucking psycho, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I don't get punched in the head anymore. I'm fucking over that. Uh, I I'm his grappling coach, and my idea is to train him enough because he's a you know two time state champion, boxing. He's got a small pro record in boxing. Um, it is to do you remember when Anderson Silva grabbed Rich Franklin and Chris Lieben, and just grabbed them in a tie plum and molested them so bad. That's what I want to be able to do with Mark. <clears throat> he's strong enough. He's good enough. And with the work, say, say after four or five sessions doing grappling with him this camp, um, he's been sparring at Cub Swanson's gym with a bunch of young, very good pros. And I'd say we went in, let's say one, you know, one month and went in the next month. And he had done, you know, four or five sessions with me and with one of my other athletes. Uh, doing the grappling and that's me you know working on c clamping here 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 neck tie up getting into positions getting into the underhook or overhook position clinching up and just getting him to be there for five minutes just hold this position because if you get clipped or some guy's too fast you get a hold of him and hold there and to build those certain parts of his body do it happen really quick and Mark's is Mark's a dog Mark is so fucking mean that um it worked really well and he's using a lot of head positioning I'm trying to figure out what's the stance what, how is this all going to work so having one of these other young pros stop him and go hey man what the fuck have you been doing the, the, these are wrestlers too you know a month ago you weren't able to, to stop us inside now you're You've learned how to control us. You've learned how to push us against the, you know, it's like, and I'm just sitting in the back, like going, no, oh, it's not me, I swear. Um, so it worked, you know, and in, in this, in this fight he had, he didn't use it too much because the guy was running like crazy, but eventually we'll run into someone else who wants to do this and we're going to eat them alive. That's where a place where I want to see Mark shut somebody down and just, just beat the shit out of them. Um, and, you know, Mark's doing it all on very, 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 very high dose uh, psychedelics. You know, we, we uh, um, I was on five grams of gummies. Mark was, Mark was on more than that. Like, good deal. <laughs> the McCall method in, in practice. Yeah. 
and that's the thing. I was crazy enough to push these limits when I was fighting, but I didn't have psychedelics as as this. Uh, I wasn't using this application of them. So I, I have an athlete. I have some athletes who, you know, they race cars and they take psychedelics and they like the my my athlete who races cars. The first race he did. You know, this big shot that he got, he took five gummies, which isn't that much. Um, and he won. Stepped into a car for the first time and won. A brand new, much faster car, much more expensive car. You know, like, I, you know, surfer, every, everyone I work with is doing it and they're doing varying doses, but nobody wants to just take a microdose. Everybody wants to be elevated. Everyone wants those senses heightened. And they want to be in a flow state. And, and this is the fastest, easiest way to do it. Obviously, it's paired with breath work and meditation and these sort of um, other other tools we have to to integrate and also get ready. Yeah, well, the one of the things that uh, has always impressed me with you is that, like you said, the service aspect and that the whole the whole America, uh, the whole athlete's journey home thing. Right. And taking that and building content around that as well, I think is going to be really cool to see kind of like what that ESPN special did with psilocybin. I don't think anyone's done a really good job of talking about athletes and ayahuasca. Um, you know, so that, I think that's going to be super fascinating to see people kind of hop into that. Yeah. I, I was supposed to be a part of that whole thing, that ESPN thing, but, um, Sadly, I wasn't. Now, nothing they they didn't do. I I, I fucked up. Um, didn't ruin my relationship with them, but just some business deals that I, I got lied to about some things and took a different deal, and they were upset with me, obviously, because they are they they were. If I would have accepted that deal, I would still be getting paid. Hmm. You know, like these people are there for anyone who's in the business side of psychedelics. These are good people who. I, I know my checks would have been coming. I would have been part of that ESPN thing, but um, I I went a different path, and that path led me to it was led by someone who had um, not the best intentions for me. So I got screwed. But it is what it is. It was all learning, and I'm really proud that I'm, I'm friends with those people like Riley Cote and and um, just to see. I still have to watch the ESPN thing. I, ha I literally have it on my laptop. One of the windows is open. I just have to watch it. Yeah, well, I mean, everything that you did with the HBO special, I, yeah, I agree. Maybe you should have probably been a part of that as well, because I think you're definitely leading the way on that conversation, not just for combat sports athletes, but for athletes and just thinking that the UFC is almost there. And I know they've kind of like false started and other stuff like they did with like cannabis and CBD with Aurora. And, mm -hmm. you know, I know this kind of came out and it's Dana's talked about it publicly right yeah. so they know they i mean they, they I, I'm, I'm glad that you're helping coach them along to that right there's that other coach part of you helping take you know multi-billion dollar industry and getting them into the right frame of mind to be operating and thinking they, i mean we know that in a way they care about the athletes right they yeah. want them to be able to compete they want them to be at the upper level i mean you got people like cheeto who's out there uh, talking about it on, on Rogan and really kind of promoting his uses of it. Right. And so having more athletes talk about that, I think is a super critical part. How, how can, if, how can people support the uh, athlete's journey home if they want to participate in that? Uh, go on my Instagram. You can find that posting up there. Apparently the link that I posted is not working again. I have to contact my partner at all because the, I don't know why the link will work one day and not link the next day. Uh, so I either have to make a new link, which is probably what I'll do. And um, yeah, just reach out to me on, on, on social media. You know, I'm sure you could find it if you go to um, donorbox.com and look up athletes journey home. We don't even have a website yet. I'm still trying to get all this stuff made and all done. It's, it's um, you know, it's just a process. It's we're brand new. The idea has been around for couple of years but but the actual organization is is months old so um as i i go through and i i'm trying to go to all these events and talk on shows like this where you know people can can start to learn about it and reach out because um we need money you know we need money to to further the cause and go to these conferences and have tables and we need to pay for the study and um just keep keep the momentum going yeah, and getting the right people involved too, right? Because the community is a uh, 
a hazy one sometimes and finding the right people as you were alluding to previously that have true intentions and like really want to not just direct the business forward but also the community and the and the story behind all that and trying to tell the right story so i know that you're on that path right and uh, it's always cool to see because man you've been steady with it too i mean what what is it like six seven years you've been pushing this and and finally getting more and more traction but you know i know it's it sometimes it feels like it false starts and people are dropping it but you're you're fighting the good fight man that's all that matters thank you i i started to try to do studies with the ufc with with cbd in 2015 or 16 they asked me to build them a post-fight concussion serum using CBD. Uh, And then the Aurora thing happened. And then all this happened. Just, just that you saw is that that cannabis industry is so gross. Um, And then I started the, the psilocybin talk in 2019. And to have Dana give me a timeline when he speaks in the press, like Ian's McCall, McCall has been doing this forever. Uh, it, It gave me, gives me a lot of credibility, which is nice. Um, as I alluded to earlier, I'm sure I'll get credit for this, which will be cool. Maybe it'll get me in Forbes again or something because that's neat to say. I've been in Forbes three times now. Um, but more accolades, it's just more frill. Like it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't really care. I just want to make sure this happens smoothly. And um, if I could, if I could truly have a, a, um, a part in this, you know, to be the person that's facilitating and, and going to the PI and going to the, I don't know if they still have, um, you know, weekends where they fly out all the fighters and they all have talks and stuff. If I could go to one of those and educate everybody on it and go to the fights, imagine if I could be the person that goes to whatever fight it, it is, <clears throat> make sure I do the traumatic brain injury protocols that I have and then escort fighters on Sunday from the unit or from the fights to the university, get them settled in and then go home. I mean, that, that would, that would be the coolest thing ever, you know, to make sure that they're all okay. Yeah. We, I know this is a long journey though. I mean, you, Grant, you've yeah. made a lot of progress in, in a short period of time, but uh, these building blocks, man, that you've been stacking up are, are going to pay off and whether it's materializes right away or 10 years down, there's no doubt that you're been an integral part of that. Anyone who knows, <laughs> anyone who knows actually knows that Ian McCall's, uh, yeah indent on this industry what else man do you have anything else going on that you want to push out there i know we've got the uh, athlete's journey home we got the uh obviously getting the the getting the knot tied as well as uh the coaching yeah. stuff what else are you pushing out there man the you know, <clears throat> athlete's journey home i'm a call method coaching platform if anyone needs coaching through psychedelic work or, or performance coaching as a human as a, just an athlete um <clears throat> That's that's my that's my job, but also if if you guys are looking for quality lab tested, highest grade products that there will never be fentanyl, there will never be bullshit in them. Um, there's an industry that's building out of Southern California and places like Oregon that where we take pride in what we make, and um, you can contact me on Instagram or see the things that I post. There's always a link to somewhere where you can buy product and that's mushrooms and LSD and, you know, these different things that, um, are, are coming together, you know, maybe not the LSD yet, but I'm sure that'll come up on a website eventually on my site. Um, but there's, there's people like me. I'm not the only one, like I said, that will provide you with good. I don't know. I, I've, I've talked to the DEA. <clears throat> I talked to people at the CIA um it's weird having connections like that now but they've reassured me they go look you're not doing anything wrong you know we're not going to come get you you're we we like you they used to raid my house looking for other shit and um you know so i've had a weird relationship with them for since i was 19 and they said we're we're looking for fentanyl you know you keep up the the good work because I, i work with churches and charities and uh the political movement and these people, they're taking the product, cops and lawyers and firemen, doctors, autistic children, wives, grandparents, everyone is taking this product now. And um, not that I would throw anyone under the bus if they did arrest me, but I, I like to hide in plain sight because I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just trying to help people. And um, just for people to know they're safe, you know, like not only are the products safe, but 
you are are more than likely safe unless you're doing some dumb shit um to where they're not gonna mess with you they 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 all know that this is the right thing to do so yeah just be sure that you're you're you're, you're a lot safer than you used to be that's for sure it's the ed- education part right i think that's the most crucial thing you do is you bring the education to it whether it's yeah. on the social or one-on-one man just being able to be that that source of information for people that if anything is i think your biggest point of service right is educating the community and the public and you have enough of a platform where people are willing to listen to you and maybe they're you know the most people hopefully are doing this but qualifying you know putting on their bullshit meter and being like does that sound right i don't know but when people start digging and like once you trigger that once you flip that light switch once you flip that light switch then they are being like, oh, maybe I need to understand more about this. And they start digging and digging and digging. And then your next, next thing you know, like, well, shit. <laughs> Uncle Creepy knew what he was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so harm prevention, you know, like set, right. setting and intention. But where, what do you, what's the purpose of taking this? You know, when, where, why? There's a lot of questions you got to ask yourself. And, and if you're going to take medicine at Coachella, make sure you've taken that medicine before because that can be a weird situation if you take the wrong substance in the wrong place with the wrong people, wrong energies, and it could fuck you up for a long time. I've seen people have psychotic breaks. I've seen people jump out of windows, not on the first floor. Um, you know, this is, we have to tread lightly with this. So just be careful, have fun, and, be, and stay positive. And you'll be all right. Yeah, man. Can, can you give me all the socials for everyone just so I can make sure that I'm listening properly and that uh, everyone is uh, following you and getting in touch with you? Yes. Mine is Ian McCall on social. I think it's still Uncle Creepy MMA on Twitter. Um, Athlete's Journey Home is, is there's an Instagram, but there's no post yet. And then uh, Dragonfly Medicines is the next medicine brand that I'm, I'm helping build with another company. And we'll have products out soon. Um, it's it's uh, D R G N F L Y medicines on Instagram, and you know we're we're doing some some collaborative work like uh, like Ruka would do, you know, um, to create lifestyle with art. Yeah, exactly. And see, Nate comes to my parents' house and it's dinner now. Oh it. really? Oh, that's awesome, man. He's he. I know he's just on a big uh, crazy trip, so I think he just got back. Yeah, you know he he's a. Uh, he doesn't have any family over here. So he comes to my parents' house. My mom has has cooked for all kinds of people. It's pretty funny. And she just wants to feed people. You know, he comes over and he doesn't have to be carnage. And he's Nathan at my house or Nate. And my parents just they adore him. You know, they they adore his 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 girlfriend, her son, and it's just it's a it's a family affair. So um we're, with Dragonfly Medicines, we're trying to build products and pair them with athletes you know what is what does mark like to take why is he taking seven and a half grams of, of, of gummies and and fighting winning a world title you know um why is how is this, what is this person taking riding this way or what is and you tie a story to it and you tie the artist to it and you tie all these creative people behind it and then um you have a better story behind the product so that's that's the next thing is for me to not really be the face of anything because i'm the face of a nonprofit. you know i'm the face of science for part of the science that i do i don't need to be the face of an illicit product like i, I need to be behind the scenes and I pull the strings and i give other people some 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 camera time number one because I don't, I don't want any more camera time and number two they make money and um i get to help people you know, like I'll, I'll, I'll I, I get, I need, I am best served as the face of this nonprofit, not, not, not some gummy company, uh, which again, nothing wrong with that, but I, I myself have, have moved on. Yeah. Well, man, I, uh, this is a journey I'm going on and <laughs> I'm going for volume of interviews here. So I'm looking forward to the next one you and I do where you're like, shit, we had 20 people show up. We had all this content filmed. Oh, guess what? The UFC is going to be help helping me do all this stuff. You know, I, I know that you're, you know, on, you're on this journey and it's going to keep stacking. And I'm looking forward to having that next conversation about it. Yeah, man. Thank you. Either way, I'm not going anywhere. So, so <laughs> I'm going to have a good time and that big smile on my face and just just keep chugging along because now that the arrows are a lot less the arrows in the back you know people sticking me with things um it's a lot less and that makes me happier because there was times where this was 
it was dark. I thought about quitting. I thought about just running away, you know, and, and um, I'm, ha I'm really happy I didn't. So they, thank you for paying attention, man. It's a big deal. Yeah, we all have those moments, right? But uh, it's the ones you keep pushing on, keep pushing, keep pushing. We, we're all going to hit adversity, right? But you you always do an amazing job of meeting it head on and climbing over it or shooting under it, whatever, whatever way you can yeah. find your way around it, which I love about you, man. Thank you. Yeah, the, this, this, two shall, yeah the, this, this two shall pass. You know, having all these amazing things happen within one week of a birthday and anniversary and engagement and world title all in one week. And it's like, cool, that was great. But this too shall pass. You know, my, I'm going to get shit on by a bird tomorrow or whatever the fuck it is. You know, like there's there's always these things that ebb and flow of life and you have to learn to just take it in and enjoy it because that's why we're here. We got to live this visceral experience. Hey, man, well, I really appreciate you doing this again. Uh, looking forward to doing it again. And uh, thanks again, brother. Yeah. We'll talk soon.